day. This is Nation Voice Tower. My name is Angelo and I'm here with the updates for today. I told you nothing can be hidden under the sun. Nothing, I repeat, can be hidden under the sun. Dino Melaya's plans um, to rig the elections, the off-cycle elections in Koji State has been exposed, all right? You know, every gubernatorial candidate always has a con contingency plan when it comes to elections in their state. This time around, in Kogi State, Dino Melaya's plans were exposed. You know why? He came out voicing his anger and um, showing the world, showing Nigerians he was so angry at the fact that he lost at the polls, all right? But... Um, the update coming to us now says Dino Melaya actually tried to rig the elections. He tried to buy votes. He paid thugs to stand in for him. But um, the same pe pe people he trusted betrayed him. This is the expose reaching our table a few minutes ago. And I'm going to share it with you. So um, I would like love to tell you that no politician in this off-cycle elections maybe was a set. Because... From what we have here, we have had the bad records of Murtala Ajaka of the SDP. Now, Dino Melaya's records. He has been uh, um, he has been trending over the political seasons in Nigeria for the wrong reasons. But this time around, his plans to rig the elections in Kogi's off-cycle elections have been exposed. His plans to pay political thugs have been exposed. That means he is one of the people who are actually, you know, who are actually, who actually, who actually have hands in political uh, brutality and political thuggery in Nigeria. And he was busy shouting at the coalition center, coalition center on 23 February elections, I beg your pardon, that um, took place sometime early this year. After the elections of 23 February, during the coalition process, he was making trouble because he felt there was injustice. But here you see, shouting and um, trying to get vindicated for injustice. I guess uh, this time around, it's a, tit, a, a, a tooth for a tooth and an eye for an eye, all right? I would say tit for tat, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I think um, this time around, um, uh, we will just say uh, that those who live by the gun will die, of course, by the gun. So let's um, uh, listen to this expose together. Dino Melaye is here again. This is the story of how Senator Dino Melaye, the People's Democratic Party's gubernatorial aspirant in the off-cycle elections in Koji State, tried to rig elections by paying thugs, political thugs, and vote buying, but failed. The breakdown of the People's Democratic Party's election expenses in the state showed that 87 million naira was budgeted for voters' mobilization, a subtle name for vote buying while 10,000 Naira and 5,000 Naira respectively were also voted for each polling officer and assistant polling officer respectively in the elections. A source told us that on Thursday, Dino Melaya's anger was partly because he claimed he was defrauded by a PDP local government chairman, his campaign director general, among others who failed to deliver the election for him. Senator Dino Melaya released 250,000 Naira per polling unit for vote buying and vote mobilization, and he was defrauded by the local government chairman of the People's Democratic Party, his campaign director general, amongst others. The money was allegedly shared amongst 14 people who gathered in one Honorable Tom Zekeri's residence in Iyale. Dino Melaye released 3.5 million naira for thugs per polling unit in the name of local security. The money was diverted by another local government chairman from the People's Democratic Party called one Alhaji Husseini Ejini. Now, Dino Melaye is very, very angry at his gubernatorial campaign council team and is asking for reforms. First here is um, an example or a sample, let me say, of the uh, payment and the procurement um, that Dino Melaye allegedly had from the People's Democratic Party. As you can see on your screen, this is um, an allocation of funds for various wards that are in Koji State. According to what we have here, the polling units are six and um, the amount to be given to them has been stipulated 5,000 for some of the polling units, 10,000 for some of the polling units, and two and um, uh, 250,000 for voters' mobilization. Another one has under the words there are party agents that will receive 10,000 naira, 
some SPOs in some wards who received 20,000 Naira and some um, people known as local security, which are the talks that were mobilized by Dino Mbelaye, would receive 50,000 Naira. Some people who are known as the Beavers, tech, Beavers technicians will receive 20,000 Naira each. And then the local government agents will receive 50,000 Naira each. And then the security at the local government coalition center, who are the talks, who are supposed to mount for the People's Democratic Party at the coalition center to allegedly cause mayhem and controversy, were supposed to be paid 250,000 Naira each. This is a sum total of what Dino Melaye was supposed to have paid people who were supposed to rig elections for him in the state. This particular amount of money is ranging to 105 million 165 thousand naira right um Dino Melaye, after spending over 103 million naira on an election uh, but um yeah yet people uh, finished his money deceived him ran away with his money and um didn't deliver for him that means Dino Melaye is yet to gain ground in koji state um you know, contrary to what he has been saying on air over and over before the off circle elections, Dino Melai obviously is yet to gain solid grounds politically in Kogi, his own state. Maybe I would suggest he does some homework and um, gets into one or two legit jobs in the government that will, you know, that will project him and then people will know how competent he is and not uh, spend his money or deceive him by eating up all his election money next time well my sincere sympathy goes to Dino Melai for having such a catastrophe in his election in Koji state i don't know what he has to do but um i think you have to stop calling these people out because they would also expose your dirty secrets they have started bringing them out and this one is so so evident i am sorry um for the campaign uh, team of Dino Melai there you actually did bad by deceiving your principal in a very very strong uh, you know, a very, very crucial time like this. Well, that is um, all said and done. Next update. Um, a woman who has come up online several times to call out Minister of Works, Dave Umahi, has come again. The same woman has written an open letter to Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the president, calling out Minister of Works again, Dave Umahi, over an alleged unpaid debt of almost nine years this money is so so much and this woman has been crying over the fact that Dave Umayi has failed to pay her but has been making threats to her life and in the process of her reclaiming her her, her, her funds or her held up funds and she said Dave Umayi has been threatening her has been sending different hoodlums to her and all that so she decided to come again come out again for the third time and write an open letter Exposing Dave Umahi and reporting to Bola Ahmed Tinubu to call his um, his fellow, his colleague or his friend, yes, to quickly um, come to her aid and pay her money that has crumbled her business over nine years. Please watch this video. Well, 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 uh, I feel sad for that woman there. 
the rich will always become rich with the poor with the money of the poor yes in nigeria the rich become richer and the poor become poorer that's the government system in nigeria but i don't know who needs to hear this but somebody out there needs to hear this to call out Dave Umahi for him to confirm this he has come out several times to say all sorts of things about this woman but for this woman to boldly still write a second open letter to Bola Ametino, but that means she knows what she's saying. Dave Umai should quickly respond to this, or anybody who needs to call into order, to call into order, please, this money this woman is talking about is a chicken change to you, to what you've stolen in uh, the Boeing State coffers, okay? So I cannot really start calling all, all of them out now because you, of course, David Umai, he know how much. You have uh, how much damage you have caused to the uh, you know to the to the coffers of Ebony State while you were governor. So please come out and pay this woman, all right, before she uh, gets over her head or she gets so crazy because the money is that you're owing her seems to be her life savings, all right. So finally, I would like to speak on the brutality of the police during the off-cycle elections and their involvement in you know in instilling frustration and pain on people on people and the citizens of nigeria by the top class all right the police has been personalized and they have been made part of governor's instructions according to an arise news analyst he furthermore opened that instructions from the governor's office always override all orders in all the police stations found around okay according to sam madi an arise news analyst please stay tuned is connivance, complicity, and corruption. Let me tell you, Tiger Base and the government house, the government has not a police station. You see, it's a generic problem with the Nigerian police. The way police has been personalized and made to become part of gov governors. If you look at police officers, police stations, they, oh, the instructions from the governor's office overrides. So the idea is that this IG should now restore the police. The police should be, and that's why we have elect, look at electoral violence. The story is always about somebody to carry the police officers. You saw the video of the civil defense lamenting. Mention the name express legate, the same name, that he took police officers and disarmed them. This is recklessness, anarchy. And like Ogochine says, it doesn't speak well of the government that is trying to show its true business attract investors, you can't tell people to come to subnational economies. When those subnational economies, the governors and his aides could actually subvert rule of law. Yeah. So I think that the IG owes a responsibility. Dismantle that tiger base at the government house. The government house is not a police station. The governor has his aides, security assigned to him. They shouldn't consider police decks in the government house. And where they take people, this is not the first, second or the third. So I think that I will hold the it's the of police responsible the federal government for this strike. It was needless. Right. What the body has done, if they have done that over time, labor has no reason to... Look, going to strike it weakens labor itself. Mm -hmm. Weakens the economy. Mm -hmm. the strike is not, it's not... It's a last resort tool. It shouldn't be used for things that rule-based process can deal with. And speaking of which, how do you think all of this, with the calling off of the strike now by the NLC mm -hmm. and TUC, how will it impact calls for strikes you know going forward in future especially when there are very serious issues on the table i think that's why use the word weakens yeah. i mean strikes yeah. should be rarely used but again you see labor was forced and this this is not good you see nigerian government should have what to call corporatist policy if you look at the oxfam report on poverty the lack of labor right is critical to why we have poverty they should see mm -hmm. labor as a governing partner Labor should be good on strike. Government should should meet with labor. Labor should discuss with government and work together. They should be working against themselves. And the only way they can work together is for these governors and institutions mm -hmm. to have a sense that governance is not about being brutish. I mean, look at the way Robert has handled this matter. So I agree with you. Labor is forced into the strikes. It's not good for labor. It's not good for the economy. All right. Um, that is that from Sam Amadi. There, he is an Arise News analyst. He is also. Uh, a director of uh, the Abuja School of Thought. Yes, so I would um, quickly explain. I told you before the off-cycle off elections that the Nigerian police force has been used several times to instill pain, frustration, and to instill, to instill injustice on Nigerians. All right? This is um, just an example of who pays the piper dictates its tune. That is what we are facing in Nigeria back at home so i would um quickly love to call on reforms in the nigerian police force the igp 
So we quickly take this into cognizance because if the Nigerian police force is seen not worthy of being a security outfit, then I don't think there will be respect according, according to our armed forces because the Nigerian police force and its officers have been called out several times for one or two misconducts that are actually uncalled for or are actually unworthy of security outfits as prestigious as that of um, the police force of a particular country. Okay, so please, those involved, Kayo De Egwetokun, the IGP, should do things about this. Please do something positive about this. You have, almost, you have always echoed on, you know, having reforms, positive reforms in the Nigerian police force. Please, this is time for you to do this. If the rich and the highly placed in the society in Nigeria continue to use the police force and the officers to instill pain on Nigerians, then sometimes Nigerians may not have options. They may not have any other options than to revolt against your, Niger your own police force. All right, please, let us do the needful. Thank you so much for staying this far. I hope you enjoyed our updates. Please like our videos, share them. Don't forget to drop a comment for us in the comment section. If you're watching me for the first time, please tap the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you will get to see me quickly and on time when I drop a new update. See you next time. Bye.